biology students. Today we're going to be talking about population growth. Let's get started. So, why do population sizes change over time in the first place? Well, really it's because there's only so much available resources in an environment and that is going to impact how the organisms live there and how many of them can live there. So, can a population continue to grow and grow forever? No way, Jose, and the reason why is because of what we just said. There's only so many resources an environment has, whether it's food, water, or oxygen. So what are these things that can limit the population growth? Well, we call them limiting factors, and that's our first vocab word today. So here are some examples of limiting factors, things like food that could cause starvation, disease, etc. All right, all of these things can keep a population from growing out of control. It is not good to have too small of a population, but it's also not a great thing to be too big of a population. So whether it's a human hunting or a predator or a natural forest fire, any of these things can limit the size of a population, whether it's human population or whether it's squirrels or deer. All right, please make sure you jot down a couple of different examples as a predator or disease, being prey, etc. All right, so um, how do you graph these population growth curves? You need to draw this graph in your notes, and the next couple of slides are going to include the same graph. Okay, so this first part of the graph is going to be called initial growth stage. It is when there's some slow growth occurring at the beginning when there's plenty and plenty of resources available. The second stage is our more important stage and we might remember this word from math class depending on what math we're in and it's called exponential growth. This is a very fast paced rapid growth. It is one of our vocab words today it means growing at a fast rate because there's no limiting factors. So there's plenty of food, there's plenty of oxygen, there's not enough predators to somehow slow our growth. We're zoom, zoom, zooming up in our amount of organisms. All right. Eventually, I hit this steady state or plateau where I level out. All right. We've been practicing talking about graphs and talking about trends, increasing, increasing, faster rate of increasing for exponential, and now slowing the increasing until it levels out to be constant. We're talking about this almost level or constant state, which is why we call it steady. We do have a vocab word for that flat area on the graph, and it's called carrying capacity. What is it? So carrying capacity is defined as the maximum number of organisms that can survive on an available resource. It's specific to an ecosystem, the exact species we're talking about in an area. So the carrying capacity for deer in the Lehigh Park near school is different than the carrying capacity for squirrel in Lehigh Park. All right, carrying capacity is, and we should label it on our graph, the flat part of the graph. It is where the amount of organisms finally levels out. There will be some times where there will be some overshooting the maximum amount, and that will cause some slight death and rebound, all right, to circulate around that maximum number of organisms point. Please, please, please make sure you drew this graph and have now labeled carrying capacity as the flat line where there's the maximum number of organisms. All right, make sure you labeled it, make sure you drew it. So what happens if the population curve declines almost too much? All right, well, that would mean there would be some sort of decrease in the population. Maybe the environment changed because of some sort of disturbance, and that decrease could be because of a lower birth rate of the organisms. They're some, for some reason not able to have as many young, or maybe something's just causing them to die off earlier. Maybe there's suddenly a new disease. So there can be some death that can make the carrying capacity suddenly change to be even lower. All right, that happens in some environmental situations. There's also a very common graph other than our carrying capacity graph we have to be able to recognize. I recommend you draw an example of this graph in your notes. We call this a predator-prey graph. Here's a really common example used. Fox as a predator and this bunny or rabbit as the prey. 
what ends up happening is that the predator and prey are limiting factors for each other. They keep the, each other in check. We could draw a line at the average number of rabbits over the whole period of time and that's probably the carrying capacity of the rabbits the rabbits are overshooting their total amount and the fox eats them and keeps them in check sometimes the fox eats too much and then the fox themselves have to decrease in numbers which allows the rabbit to rebound so as the prey increases, the predator increases. As the prey decreases, the predator decreases. And they each have a different average amount because carrying capacity is specific to an organism in a particular environment. Good job. So how extreme is extinction? We've talked about that there's a maximum number of organisms and sometimes there's a decline. Well, extinction is if that decline accidentally went way too far. And this has happened. We have examples of species completely disappearing off of the face of this planet all the time. For instance, the dodo bird is an organism that was hunted too much because it was kind of fun to hunt, people thought, because it was kind of a silly creature. People also really loved to hunt this guy who was the Tasmanian devil, um, Tasmanian tiger, excuse me, and it was just so beautiful that they liked its fur. We've also had problems with pollution in certain environments causing extinction like the golden toad in the rainforest. So extinction happens, but it's the very extreme amount. We as scientists try to track this so that we could catch it in advance. Last but not least, we could also talk about this not just with the average plant or animal. We could talk about this with humans. When did humans hit exponential growth? Are we still in exponential growth? So you'll be talking about this some in class. Do note that there's examples of when we've had dips in our population, like the Black Plague. Um, but what it's pretty clear is, have we reached a carrying capacity? Does it look like we're leveling out right now? No, we are between 7 and 8 billion right now, and we are increasing super, super fast. So we're in the middle of exponential growth right now. And scientists don't actually agree upon what our carrying capacity is, because we have this cool ability to adapt and have new technologies to be able to make more food and have enough resources. So the question is, will we reach a carrying capacity and level out, or will we deplete ourselves of too many resources and really struggle? That's something for you to think about. All right, good job, you guys.